Genesis chapter 42. So now Joseph has become the ruler of Egypt and there's been the seven years famine be already begun after they've had seven years of good crops and now everyone is starving and we're expecting the dreams that Joseph had when he was 17 years old to start to come true that his brothers are going to come up and bow to him and yet when he was in prison that must have seemed absolutely impossible but it just shows that God's purpose will work out now Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt and Jacob said to his sons why do you look at one another there's corn in Egypt go down there and buy for us from there so that we may live and not die and I think the brothers were a little bit hesitant to go down there because they thought hmm we did sell Joseph down there to Egypt I just wonder if we might meet him Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt but Jacob didn't send Benjamin Joseph's brother with his brothers for he said perhaps some happened to him so the sons of Israel that's the sons of Jacob because Jacob's name had been changed to Israel came to buy among those who came for the famine was in the land of Canaan Joseph was the governor over the land it was he who sold to all the people of the land Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves down to him with their faces to the earth. Da, da, da. The dream had started to be fulfilled, which he'd had all those years ago. Joseph saw his brothers and he recognized them, but acted like a stranger to them and spoke roughly with them. He said to them, where did you come from? They said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, You're spies, you've come to see the nakedness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We're all one man's sons, we're honest men. Your servants are not spies. He said to them, No, but you've come to see the nakedness of the land. They said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. The youngest is this day with our father, and one is no more. They're talking about Joseph. Now it just shows if you keep on repeating a lie enough, then you will end up believing it. And that's the problem. That if you tell lies and you keep on repeating them, then you will come to believe them. And that's what the brothers had done. They'd lied to Jacob and said, oh yeah, an animal must have eaten him. And now they believed it. But, but didn't they remember? Well, yes, but they had deceived themselves, I think, because the human heart deceives itself, especially when you start telling lies. But how? Well, that's how we're made by, by our nature. That if you start telling lies, you end up believing it. Joseph said to them, It's like I told you, saying you're spies. So by this you shall be tested. You shall not go out from here by the life of Pharaoh, unless your youngest brother comes here. Now Benjamin, of course, was Joseph's brother by the same mother and the same father. The others were actually all his half-brothers. So he says, send one of you and let him get your brother, and you shall be bound, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely you are spies. So he put them all in custody for three days. Joseph said to them, the third day do this and live for I fear God if you are honest men then let one of your brothers be bound in your prison but you go carry grain for the famine of your houses bring your youngest brother to me and so will your words be be tested and you won't die they did so they said one to another we are certainly guilty about our brother and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he begged us and we wouldn't listen therefore this distress has come upon us so Joseph begged them not to leave him there in the pit, and they didn't show him any mercy. Reuben said, didn't I tell you, saying, don't sin against the child, and you wouldn't listen? And also his blood is required. They didn't know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. Joseph turned himself away from them and cried. Then he returned to them and spoke to them, and took Simeon from among them, and bound him before their eyes. 
Then Joseph gave a command to fill their bags with grain and to restore each man's money into his sack and to give them food for the way. So it was done to them. They loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey food in the lodging place, that would have been like in a sort of hotel, he saw his money, and it was in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money is, re is returned. Behold, it's in my sack. Their hearts failed them, and they turned trembling one to another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? They came to their father in the land of Canaan, and told him everything that had happened, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly with us, and took us for spies of the country. We said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies, we are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, it's Joseph, see they keep on telling the lie, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. The man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the famine of your houses, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me. Then I will know that you are not spies, but that you are men. So I will deliver your brother to you, and you will trade in the land. Well, I think Joseph set this up so that they would think about the question, which was... Have you really got a younger brother? Well, Joseph was the younger brother. And he's asking them, are you really truthful? And so that was the question that they had. Are we really truthful? So he's, tra he's doing this not because he wants to be horrible to them, but because he wants to bring them to repentance. So he's trying to touch their consciences. And they go on telling Jacob, It happened as they emptied their sacks that, behold, each man's bundle of money was in his sack. When they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were frightened. Jacob, their father, said to them, You've bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin away. Now you see, J Jacob says, You've taken away my children. You've taken away Joseph from me. Well, they had said that Joseph had been killed by a wild animal, but... You can see that Jacob underneath knew that they had probably killed him. So all these things are revealing their consciences. And that's how God works in our lives as well. Then spoke to his father saying, Kill my two sons if I don't bring him to you. Entrust Benjamin to my care and I'll bring him to you again. Jacob said, My son will not go down with you for his brother is dead and he only is left. If harm happens to him along the way in which you go, then you will bring down my grey hairs with sorrow to Sheol. Now, Sheol is the Hebrew word that means... Grave. That's right, grave. And sometimes it's translated hell, but hell is just the grave. 